will be covering the diploma program in value added products from fruits and vegetables. I welcome all the students. I hope all the students have received the program guide for this and the students who have enrolled for the English language, they have also received all the study materials also. I have with my colleague Mr. Dr. J. S. Sindhu, he will be also responding to the questions and queries to the program. So, let us start with the first thing. The first question comes. What is the objectives of this program? The objectives is to develop human resource on the various aspects. First is on post harvest management that is to minimize the post harvest losses, develop human resource for the primary processing at the rural level, the students who can do the primary processing, production of value added products and development of youth as the young entrepreneurs. This program will impart knowledge and potential proficiency, particularly in procurement of raw materials, preparation of value added products, how to prevent losses in fresh and processed products, marketing and economical aspects and managing the small and medium enterprises. The next question which may be occurring into you, what is the scope of this program? whether the really this we have joined the program, what is the scope? You may be aware that we are the largest producer like for the milk and also for the fruit and vegetables, we are the second larger producer. We produced about 161 million tons of fruits and vegetables. But you will be also surprised to know that the wastage particularly in fruits and vegetables is 22 percent is there. Our country is very poor in processing and value addition as compared to the other countries. The processing level is only 7 percent in our country as compared to the other countries. Then what is the, the scope of the food processing industry? This is one of the emerging areas. The government of India has given the emphasis that lot of emphasis should be given on the food processing industry. To give you the that the growth rate in this sector is around 8 percent which is much higher than the total growth rate of the agriculture sector. Then export this area covers about 13 percent of the export what we are making outside and it has lot of good employment potential also. The target which the ministry of food processing has set up is to increase the level of processing from 6 to 20 percent. Now coming particularly for the fruit and vegetables at present whatever we are producing we are only processing around 1.8 percent is there and by 2009 and 10 the target is to have 4 percent of the level of processing. So what this data indicates one thing we concluded that the level of fruit and vegetable production we are second largest in the country but the wastage is too much around 22 percent of the fruit and vegetables which we produce it goes waste. This means it is not available to our population and simultaneously the prices also go high. The second thing is level of processing which is taking place is very less. It is only 1 point or around 2 percent is there. Now the government of India is giving emphasis and the target is to double the level of processing from 2 to 4 percent. So, when the level of processing will increase, the requirement of manpower will also increase. So, this program has been supported by Ministry of Food Processing Industries with the objective that we should develop the technician level manpower for the fruit and vegetable processing industry. The second objective is that the people should be able, the rural youth should be able to do the primary processing at the rural level. They can do the value addition at the rural level and should be able to deliver the products at the urban areas. The third objective is that the students who will be learn undergoing this program, they will be able to prepare a range of value added products from fruit and vegetables. And then to develop the small and medium entrepreneurs is the objectives of the this program. So, with these objectives 
what we see is that the scope really exists and that's what our honorable president has said that the second green revolution will come from the fruit and vegetable processing and food and processing sector only so with this hypothesis and we assume that there will be good scope for the students who are enrolled for this program is there now what is the target group the target group is normally the horticulture farmers and food processors the skilled workers are technicians working in fruit and processing industry the ngo functionaries are trainers are entrepreneurs and the staff member who are working in food processing training center horticulture post harvest management rural educators farmers what are the target and duration of the program the target includes the senior secondary pass outs i think the most of the learners who have joined this program they are 10 plus 2 to keep the field open from any field whether they are science they are commerce they are our students can enroll for this program keeping into requirement for the ministry of agriculture that lot of rural youth with bill will be not 10 plus 2 so the igno has made a special arrangement that the 10th pass students can enroll simultaneously for the bpp and for this program you may be aware that bpp is a type of non formal program which is existing in the igno so that the students who are not 10 plus 2 they can within the 6 months they can clear the two courses and can be made equivalent to 10 plus 2 but for these agriculture programs the we have made the provision the students can enroll for the simultaneously for the these two programs so now with this background information students you must be clear that you have already enrolled i think you must have the students who have the opted for the english medium they must have received the study material the program study center has been allotted to you and you must have received the program guide also my first request will be that kindly go through the program guide very carefully because this will guide you complete about the programs and this will obviate the gaps which is existing between us between the program study center and regional center now the duration of the program if you see the guide you will find the duration of the program is written 1 to 3 years now what the question may be asking in your mind what is 1 to 3 years the minimum duration of the program is 1 year and this because open and distance learning is a type of flexible system so this mean you can complete this diploma program in 3 years you can take the courses maybe there are 8 courses in this you can take the exam for the 2 you can take the 3 you can take the all the eight courses simultaneously or you can stagger the courses but our advice will be take all the courses in first attempt because we have seen that the drop rate keeps on increasing once you drop the courses now what is the program structure of this course this course consists of eight courses what are those courses the first course is food fundamentals the next course is principles of post harvest management of fruits and vegetables third course is food chemistry and physiology fourth course is food processing and engineering one the next is food microbiology the next course is food processing and engineering two then food quality testing and evolution and then entrepreneurship and marketing as you know that this course covers the post harvest aspects the primary processing production of value added products quality control and entrepreneurship and marketing these are the the salient features because we mentioned that this is a not only the course program which gives you some skills about the processing of value added products but it is a very composite mixture of many new things it gives you the food fundamentals so that you are well aware that what are the different dimensions of food processing it also covers the food post harvest technology because as i mentioned around 22% losses take place immediately once the the product is not taken care so post harvest management particularly for fruits and vegetables is important so the post harvest management is the second course then we want to know why many changes take place so the food chemistry and physiology that how the ripening takes place when the what is the importance of carbohydrate what is the importance of different enzymes roles of fermentation so this food chemistry and physiology covers all those aspects 
then the range of the next course is food processing and engineering one under this we covered the all the aspects related to unit operations engineering aspects production of value added products at the smaller scale so this is there then you may be aware that the fruit and vegetables contains a good higher amount of moisture when the higher amount of moisture is present there the microorganisms can spoil these products so food microbiology gives us a good introduction to the food microbiology is there in the course 5 then the food processing and engineering when we go at higher level the food processing by application of heat by food dehydration food packaging so these aspects are covered under the food processing and engineering two courses there i would say with the globalization the export of the fruit and vegetables is gaining importance as i mentioned our target is to have the global uh, coverage from 1.5% to 3% so there is lot of scope of exporting these products and for when we want to export the product food quality is gaining importance the quality aspects are also coming important in our country also you may a new food law has been passed it which is known as food safety and standard certification so under this we have to take care of the food quality aspects so this course food quality and testing evolution will give you all the aspects related to the quality is there then once you want to market an entrepreneur because that is the the success of the program so we have covered all the aspects related to entrepreneurship and marketing in the course 8 is there so i will give you tell you about the now the first course food fundamentals this consists of the four blocks first block is introduction to food science and technology then characteristics of edible agriculture products the nutrition and quality aspects so this course consists of four blocks and introduction to food science and technology it further consists of three units that is introduction to food science then food processing industries food laws and associated bodies we again structure the block into small units if you see the block 2 of the course 1 it consists of four units food grains pulses and oil seeds is the first unit fruits and vegetables is the second unit dairy poultry meat fisheries and marine products is in the unit 3 and commercial crops spices medicinal and aromatic plants so this block gives you about the introduction to all these crops then the nutritional aspects the block 3 covers the nutritional aspects what are the nutritional importance that what is the role of carbohydrates what is the role of fat these fruit and vegetables are known as protective foods because they contains good amount of minerals and vitamins and that is the role because you may be knowing that if you want more energy you go for the carbohydrate or fat based products the carbohydrate mean potatoes or starch these type of and if you want to build your proteins then we go for the like egg milk or these type of products we go but when you want vitamins and minerals then the the fruit and vegetables are the best source so these are also known as protective food so we go by the nutritional aspects have been covered into this let us see what it covers in the next block in the quality aspects we cover the quality characteristics and what are the quality assurance regulation because the new rules are coming food safety laws isa standards food safety and standard 2006 act so these aspects have been covered under the quality aspects so this is about the course one is there some of the practicals also are in the state in the bulk density true density how do you estimate the crude protein total carbohydrates and free fatty acids then come to the course two course two as i mentioned the post harvest management plays an important role because to how to reduce the losses we must be as a farmer or as a rural youth we must know what is the right stage to pluck the fruit and vegetables how do you pluck and how do you keep them for storage and marketing because otherwise what will happen if you are not handling them proper the rate of wastage is very high similarly once you pluck the flowers and you keep at low temperature say if you reduce the temperature to 10 degree centigrade the shelf life doubles so for all these aspects this is the course which will respond to many of the queries 
particularly related to the post harvest management of fruit and vegetable now this covers this has the four blocks what are those blocks the first block is need and importance post harvest treatments storage and marketing processing and preservation these are the blocks are there so in the first block it consists of five units covering importance of post harvest management then causes of pre and post harvest losses then maturity indexes and the harvesting parameters packaging and transportation of fresh produce and control of losses the block 2 is the post harvest treatments when we get the fruit and vegetable we have to clean selection sorting grading and packaging and what type of treatments is in the next unit like pre cooling curing then how to reduce the sprouting and fungicide application so these are the two units into the block then storage and marketing because what are the factors which affect the storage life what are the storage structure what is the market information system and market mechanization can take place block 4 is about the processing and preservation it covers the minimal processing the processing which can be done at the rural level or at the farm level or field level so those aspects have been covered into this block so this is the course 2 and range of practicals you can see how do you assess the losses what are the demonstration of value addition on the on farm storage like pusa zero energy cool chamber solar drying primary and minimal processing extraction and preservation of pulps pulps and juices so these all aspects have been covered in the course 2 next course is food chemistry and physiology this course consists of four blocks first is introduction then food constituents food physiology and food fermentation introduction because in this course the two important aspects food chemistry and food physiology has been covered then in food constituents we have structured into four units the first unit is carbohydrates and lipids the next is protein enzymes and water the next is vitamins and minerals and fourth is food additives the next course is block is on food physiology it covers the ethylene liberation growth maturation and sensation and physiological disorders whatever defects you see on the fruit and vegetables all those physiological disorders are covered into this and next is food fermentation block which covers all the aspects about fermentation that how do we do the fermentation even it covers the fruit based alcoholic beverages and industrial aspects of the food fermentation is there and the practicals also all the chemistry based practicals like determination of moisture ash reducing sugar crude fiber these aspects have been covered under this course the next course is on the food processing and engineering one it consists of four blocks first block is introduction the next is on unit operations then block 3 is on value added products from fruits and vegetables and block 4 is plant layout equipment and mechanization because how do you place your equipment because the objective is we should reduce the the time we should reduce the energy so that there is a minimum wastage is there now in block 1 it consists of again four units the first unit is on unit operations then moisture content and equilibrium moisture content cleaning and grading and storage if you are able to have proper moisture these are the temperature and moisture are the to your friends and your two animals also if you are able to control them properly you can prolong the shelf life of your fruit and vegetables so those aspects have been covered in the block block 2 covers the on the various unit operations which is used like milling size reduction material handling and transportation so these aspects have been covered in the block 2 the type of value added products which can we can make at the farm level or at the small scale level at the rural level this block covers those aspects to give you the units the juices and beverages jam jellies marmalade and other sugar based products pickles chutney sauces and tomato products and dehydrated products from fruit and vegetable so this is the heart of the the courses there which gives you the process details and the how do you select the equipment how do you lay out the equipment what are the plant sanitation and effluent treatment which as a food processor 
entrepreneur you have to give is covered under the block four plant layout equipment and mechanization you can see the range of practicals these have been given production of fruit jam jellies and all type of products production of pickles production of tomato juice and similarly drying of the products repair and maintenance of the machineries so this course is the heart so you you must uh, read this course thoroughly as an entrepreneur to be successful the next course is food microbiology course is there as i mentioned the microorganisms there are good microorganisms also there are bad microorganisms also normally when we try to relate the microorganisms we go for the bad microorganisms but there are certain good microorganisms also the dahi the yogurt which you eat is because of the microorganisms the particularly in summer you enjoy the kanji from the black carrots so this is also type of fermented product is there so but food microbiology course cover this and this again consists of four blocks the block one is introduction to various microorganisms like what is microorganism what is yeast what is mold then how to control the microorganisms what are the factors which affect their growth the microorganisms i mentioned they can cause the poisoning also so what is the block 3 then what should be the safe chemical and microbial limits for different foods is there the block 1 as i mentioned so this covers the details about the the unit it consists of four units is there similarly block 2 again consists of four units controlling the microorganisms covering various aspects like thermal control of microorganisms drying then chemical for controlling the microorganisms what type of preservatives there like at home salt we use so it, these details that how much salt we should use so that you can preserve how much sugar we should use we should preserve how much additional chemical preservative we should add up whether they are allowed or they are not allowed what is the controlling how do they affect the microorganisms is there then the food poisoning also there could be food borne diseases food intoxication bacterial infection so those aspects are there you must have heard that many people are dying because of the food poisoning or the is there so those aspects have been covered into this then we come to the block 4 what is the safe chemical and microbial limits for different foods so those aspects have been covered and similarly the practicals based on this course like preparation of media microscope staining techniques aseptic culture how do you count the things so these are given as there then we come to the next course 6 food processing and engineering 2 now this is a type of processing when we go at a large scale like food preservation by this consist of five blocks food preservation by application of heat food preservation through water removal then food preservation through temperature reduction then product utilization and food packaging is there now the food preservation by application of heat so this gives you the basic about the heat and mass transfer how do we apply the heat what it is impacts and particularly in heat application one of the industrial importance is canning of fruit and vegetables so this course block gives you about the all the aspects that is how why what of the canning of fruit and vegetables similarly in the block 2 when we go how do we preserve by removing the water so the forms of water as i mentioned the moisture content plays an important role so what type of how the different forms of water is there a water activity how do they absorb the moisture so drying dehydration and operation these are the the industrial process so they are explained in detail the next block 3 about chilling and control and modified atmosphere storage by putting carbon dioxide putting nitrogen you must have seen when you take the chips packet so you tear because it is a modified the atmosphere has been modified we have put the nitrogen so that the shelf life is in, increased so those aspects have been covered into this then product utilization the type of by products utilization of fruit and vegetables for food feed and range of industrial products then food fortification those aspects are covered under the product utilization and in food packaging i think you will agree that the the food processing revolution has taken place because of the food packaging now we can get the packets within the 1 ml packet also 
and up to 10 liters also or even more also bulk packaging is there. If you want to have a sauce for only one sandwiches or for two sandwiches or so this packaging how does this packaging role its need and importance type of packaging materials packaging processes and how it can do the marketing aspects also so these are covered into this so this course then the practicals like canning then testing the flexible packaging material preparation of carbonated drinks these are covered under this then course 7 as I mentioned the quality aspects are becoming very important for our country also because new laws are being formed food safety and standardization and then the for international law codex law is there then when you want to export the product you may have to take the certificate from the different agencies so that as an entrepreneur you are able to export the products to the outside we have introduced a new a complete course into this structure and that course is known as food quality testing and evolution it consists of three blocks the first block is on quality the next is testing and evolution and then next is analytical instrumentation the first block quality covers the what is the importance of quality the quality standardization and food safety management then testing and evolution what are the physical chemical and microbiological testing and how do we do the sensory anal analysis evolution of the food so this core block to cover and as you know like cover the testing the instrumentation is also advanced technology has advanced so in this case also we have the analytical instrumentation which is on for the like balance pH meter and what are the based on the instruments based on the electromagnetic radiations are also covered under this course and accordingly the practicals that is estimation of benzoic acid of the sodium chloride calorimetric method so all those aspects have been covered the next course is on entrepreneurship and marketing as i mentioned this course I, the objective is that the the student the learner who is enrolled in this program should be independent he should be able to market his product himself and his the job percentage as you know the the wage employment is shrinking in our country we want by after going doing this program you should be job giver you should be able to provide jobs to the others and with this a complete course on entrepreneurship and marketing because now this has been proved that the entrepreneurship is not an art it is a mix of art and science entrepreneur skills can be provided to the students if the proper environment is there there are certain skills are there which could be inculcated among the the learners so with this course this consists of five blocks block one is on entrepreneur and entrepreneurship setting up of an enterprise planning for the enterprise marketing management of the enterprise and assessing the performance now as is mentioning block one covers the entrepreneur and entrepreneurship that how do you want being an entrepreneur is the first unit what are the entrepreneur skills and how do we can develop the entrepreneur skills so with this course i'm sure not only for this fruit and vegetables you can become an entrepreneur and very optimistic in your personal life also then how do you set up an enterprise that how do you get the business idea how to make market assessment what does marketing involve and how do you analyze the situation the competition in the market so this block will help you in identifying in setting giving the skills that you are able to see the make a profile of your competitors and what are your path your successful rate you can set up then next is planning for an enterprise and it covers preparation of the business plan arranging the inputs financial material and understanding the components for the marketing is there the next block four is about the marketing management that what are the how do you set the price how do you develop the distribution management how do you go for the promotion of the marketing so this is there and last is the block is assessing the performance that how you are performing as an entrepreneur as an ent industry so those aspects are covered in this block is there and you just see the practicals which have been included 
like preparation of bankable report which covers the cost of projects and means of finance preparation of production raw material consumable and gross sales calculation of working capital preparation of taxation statement procedure for fpo licensing so all those practical aspects have been covered under this course is there so this is the course number 8 is there and to support the study material we have included the audio visual also and a range of 8 to 10 audio visuals will be prepared already to the all the program study center around 5 to 6 audio visuals have been sent and which they will be disposed now you have enrolled for this program you have seen the program study center the next question which may be striking in your mind how do i will do the practicals or how will i get the skills learned i mean so those details have been given but what is the procedure friends we identify the program study center for providing you the practical counseling that is we identify we call identify the host institutions where these following facilities are there and these are the institutions we establish the program study centers at the research and training institutions under icr our state agriculture universities our kvks subject to that they have the good practical facilities in the fruit and vegetable courses that is all the practicals they are able to demonstrate are arranged for you these are the the program study centers like agriculture and horticulture colleges home science colleges the food and science and technology colleges community centers which are having the advanced facilities and food processing training centers food processing and analysis centers these are the places and even for these programs if the industry people are they can also become the program study center what is the strength of igno is flexibility if the industries want to become program study center they can also become program study center and their workers and some external students can attend the classes there then who will be teaching you we call them the counselors they will be conducting the theory counseling and practical counseling for you and bsc msc or pg diploma holders in food science in food technology in post harvest technology or in food microbiology they will be the counselors will be there now how much counseling will take place we call them there are two aspects theory aspects counseling of theory components and counseling of the practical components is there the total sessions for the theory counseling will be 20 sessions will be there and each session will be of 2 hours and 30 minute session will be there that is the structure and the flexibility we have given to program study center so that they are flexible to arrange the schedule for you but we tentatively what we have kept is first session is on orientation then in for each co- course he will orient you then again after some four months they will do the theory counseling for all the eight courses then the final revision will be there so total five days you may have to attend the theory counseling so if you are working somewhere so you have to plan the things so that you attend the theory counseling accordingly the theory counseling could be arranged for you at the during saturday and sunday also the counseling practicals for practical as i mentioned this is a type of what we call vocational and entrepreneurial program so in this 80 sessions will be there for the practical and each session will be of 4 hours duration this mean total 40 days you need there are two types of experiments we do we call them guided experiments that will be for 32 days and unguided experiments will be for 8 days will be there and for this all the teachers counselors or coordinators we give the money to the teachers who are there and these are the counseling payment norms for theory the teacher who is taking he will be getting rupees 300 session for practical the teacher will be getting 400 for the session similarly laboratory assistant will be also paid and laboratory attendant is also paid laboratory usage charges also we pay and for consumables also because these practicals will need lot of consumables they are also being paid to the uh, them then the program in charge our coordinator every month he is paid around 1500 rupees on honorarium in the conveyance allowance is separate depending upon the city for administrative support the institution is will be paid the money 
7500 which includes the typing and sectoral support staff is there then comes the examination what type of is there the weightage to the program 50 percent weightage is to theory and 50 percent weightage is to the practical is there in theory we have only the term and examination this is the program where there are no assignments are there so if you are other friends who are enrolled for the other programs they are looking for assignments at for this session you need not worry about the assignments there are no assignments for this program so all the theory weightage is on the term and examination for the term and examination as i mentioned the examination will be scheduled in december for practicals we have the two types of practical guided and unguided experiment is there friends you must remember 75 percent attendance is must for practical you will not be able to take the your even theory examination if you are not attending the practical counseling so my request will be do attend the practical counseling regularly maintain the practical counseling and clear your guided and unguided experiment properly the weightage is for guided experiment 70 percent weightage is there and for unguided experiment 30 percent weightage and this is the the breakup is there and for each practical you will be given the marks and pass percentage is 50 percent marks you have to secure in the theory and in the practical the weightage as i was mentioning the weightage is 40 percent how do you perform the experiment how do you report is 20 percent and that the teacher will be doing the test also 20 percent and 20 percent will be recorded. so this is the arrangement for the guided so all the experiments are important and we want to see that you must learn all the experiment you must do the experiments with your hands and that's why the counselors and the program study centers are being given the money so that they can arrange the practicals for you is there similarly for the unguided also this is the weightage is uh, there now i'll come to the what are the type of the program study center which we have established for this program we are able to establish around 23 program study centers are there in different areas. In Khanna, Ludhiana is there. In UP, we have at Varanasi and Agra. Then similarly at Lucknow also it is there. And Pratapgarh. In Odisha, Bhumneshwar is the place. At Anand, A.D. Patel Institute of Technology Institute in Gujarat. And at Junagarh also it is there. In Ranchi, Birsa Agriculture University, Ranchi is there. In Delhi, we have the Shahid Rajguru College of Applied Science at Vivek Vihar. Then at Velour is there. Then at uh, Uttarkashi, then Tirpura. So these are the, at the Kerala also, Palampur, Pune, Jaipur, then Bhopal, at Hisar, Bangalore, these are the places where the study centers have been established. I think now you must have received the program study center. If you have not received, you can approach to the regional center and see the that you are attached to the proper program study center. Because you friends, you must bear with us because when we identify the program study center, we check that they have the requisite facilities for conducting the practical in the terms of infrastructure in terms of equipment facilities, in, in terms of teachers. Now friends, there is a lot of arrangement for sponsoring the students also. Horticulture mission has written to all the mission directors that they can sponsor their the candidates. Like from Calcutta, around 12 to 15 students have been sponsored by the state department. So the, the men who are involved in horticulture, the people who are working in the horticulture section, they can request to their state department to sponsor the things. So if your friends are working there, please request them about these facilities so that they could be sponsored. Under then, there is a, a scheme known as Atma scheme under the Ministry of Agriculture of Extension Department. There the rural youth can be covered under the scheme and their 100% fees reimbursement will take place if they are sponsored the students under the Atma scheme is there. So friends, you can enroll yourself, you can the rural youth who are under this program, they can sponsor 
they can get enrolled for this program and get their fee reimbursement for the program. So, this is the in brief about the, the program. So, if your questions particularly is there, you are welcome. But I would like to request to all the students that kindly go through the program and see that there is no communication gap. We thank you for joining the program and for any queries, you can write to the School of Agriculture. We will be solving your problems and we will be requesting the regional center and program study center to cooperate and give you the complete support. Thank you very much, students.